shall continually be in my mouth No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Anybody make that declaration no matter what's going on around you You'll give your God the glory. Come on, I will bless. Bless the Lord at all times. And his praises. And his praises should continually be in my mind. No matter how I feel. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. simple you got it now I dare you to make a declaration right now come on I will bless I will bless the Lord at all time this praise no matter how I feel as long as I have breath in my body as long as I'm breathing
No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Cause you've been so good You've been so good God, you've been there right there You've been That's it, come on, lift it up I tell you where you are right now just to testify of his goodness testify of his goodness testify of his goodness I dare you to open up your mouth and tell him Ben come on don't be cute with it <laughs> because he's been keeping you and he's been holding you and he's been a shield and protection over your life come on I dare you to open up your mouth right there and tell him <laughs> you've been so God, you've been so good. Oh, so many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. So many times you've healed me. You've been better than good to me. Come on. So many doors you've opened. I can't count the ways that you've made. So many times. Better than good to me. So many doors. God, I can't count the ways. So many times. You've been better than good to me. So many doors. I can't count the ways. So many times. God. your house right now in your car right now wherever you are I dare you to lift up your hands and declare the goodness of your God you've been you've been you've been break the music you've been Come on, if you love him, you ought to bless him. Come on, if you love him, you ought to bless him. 
Come on, if you really love him, you ought to bless him. If he's been good to you, you ought to bless him. If he brought you out, you ought to bless him. Don't be cute with it, because God has been good to you. You ought to open up your mouth and tell God how much you think. We love you. God, we bless you. God, we honor you. God, you've been good, God. 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 Hey. 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 Somebody ought to open up your mouth. Hey. Hey. My soul love love Jesus oh, oh my, 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 my soul love love Jesus my, 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 my soul love Why don't you bless, bless his name, oh, my, my soul, Ooh, it loved, it loved, it loved Jesus, oh, 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 my soul, I, I need you to lift your hands right there, love. Love, love, love Jesus. I'm gonna bless. I'm gonna bless. Bless His name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord. Somebody ought to just tell him thank you right there. Yeah. My soul say yeah. He's been good. Can, can you point over at somebody and tell them he's been good? I know he's been good. I dare you to praise him right where you are. I dare you to get out of your get up, jump up and down and say he's been good to me. Oh, oh, bless, bless, bless his name. Let us tell the Lord, thank you. all over the building tell him Lord I love you hey Lord I love you through it all through it all we made it this far and how many know faith will lead us on by faith we made it thus far and faith will lead us on thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh what a mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve If you call on the Lord, he will answer prayer. If you call on the Lord, he will. Oh, if you call on Jesus, he will answer prayer. He will answer prayer. He will answer prayer. Oh, if you call on the Lord, he will answer prayer. If 
How many feel Jesus right now? How many feel the Holy Ghost? The Holy Spirit that is, is moving up and down these aisles through your pews. He's here this morning. You don't have to call on him to bring him down. The word is knocking even in your mouth. And that is the word of faith which we preach if God's son Jesus has been raised from the dead I know I'm saved I said I know I'm saved because he's been raised from the dead and can't nothing stop me from lifting my hands and telling God I thank you because it's another day that the Lord has kept me Just worship just for a moment. Just lift those hands and just worship for a moment. Thank him. Worship him for who he is. And then thank him for what he has done for you. Thank you. Grab your Bible and turn that Bible to 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. And 41st through the 46th verse, verses. Turn that Bible there. and uh, Whatever your Bible is, it, it doesn't make any difference as long as it's the Word of God. It's a tablet. If it's an iPhone, as long as you have the Word of God in front of you, we want you to see the Word of God. And if you don't have any Bible, we do have it there on the screen that you be able to see that we are preaching directly from the word of God. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth away, but the word of God shall forever ever stand. Heaven and earth gonna pass away, but the word of God will forever stand. And, and that's why I, I, I live and I move and I operate in the word of God. That is, that's your bread. That's your life. The word of God. Don't let nobody fool you. This world cannot keep you. I don't care who you put in office. I don't care who's your supporter and what your job is. When it comes down to your soul and your life for eternity, the word of God is the only thing that's going to forever stand. Everything else, I remember Jesus telling his disciples that you see all of these buildings and all these stones and it's beautiful, you know, you go over the world, it's some beautiful places and we like to travel. But won't one stone 
be left upon another. All that stuff is going to perish. The only thing that's going to last forever is your soul. You're going to spend that somewhere for eternity. Well, Pastor Hare, where? You're going to spend it in heaven peacefully and joyfully or you're going to spend it in damnation in hell where there is weeping and gnashing of the teeth. So the word of God says this morning in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 41 as we began and commenced to read and Elijah said unto Ahab knucklehead listen to Jezebel get thee up Eat and drink. Y'all need to think about that as I, I, I read that. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. See, that was about two seconds for somebody to shout right there, but that, you didn't take advantage of it. I, I heard Brother Jeremy, you, you understand. Let me tell you, I, I, he said, get ye up, start eating. Okay, when you start saying eat and drink, you know what that means. You got a good time. Shout, because I, I hear a sound of the abundance. So Ahab went up to eat. I like him. He's a knucklehead. But he did exactly what the prophet said. Ahab went up to drink and and Elijah went up to the top of Karma and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And if ever was a time that we need to have our face between our knees, it's right now. Then said to his servant, go up. Now look toward the sea. And he went up. His, his ministers, his sons of the house, he sent them to look. And they looked and they said, there is nothing. Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about abundance. I don't see nothing and he says go again seven times every time they come back and tell him I don't see nothing go back again thank God all right and it came to pass at the seventh time oh, blah, blah. see you got to wait on your completion Seven mean completion. That he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, about the size of an average man's hand, not my hand. Mine is not average, it's the same size as Michael Jordan's. As my wife know, we proved that point. And he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare. That chariot. In other words, it's time to move now. And get thee down. Hmm. That the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. I, 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 I want, and then I need you to turn to 
Deuteronomy, Leviticus 26 and 4. And, and, and Leviticus 26 and 4 says these words. Then, then will I give you rain in what? And the land shall yield her. And the trees of the field shall yield there. <sighs> Not only that, Deuteronomy 11 and 14 says this way that I will give you the of your land in his the first rain and the that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thy oil I'm going to go to Zechariah 10 and 1 ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone, to everyone, grass in the field. I, I need you to shout right now, and my subject here this morning, it's on the way. Somebody shout it real loud. It's on the way. You may be seated in the presence of God. It's on the way. I don't care how long it's been. It's on the way. The rain is on the way. The raining of blessings, the raining of his anointing, the raining of the Holy Ghost is on the way. There is something in this message, in this text, that speaks to us today. The very thing it speaks to is that we are in a drought. First thing I want to talk about, the moment in verse 41. Look at the moment. The moment he said, and Elijah said unto him, Get thee down, eat and drink. But the moment is that there has been no rain for three years and a half. No rain. There's a drought. There's a drought in church in the body of Christ not in particularly this building but the body of Christ who is the body of Christ born again believers during the midst of this pandemic there's a drought people are giving up people are throwing in the towel people are not being who they, you thought they were. There is a drought. When, 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 when rain don't come, when you don't have no water, you know there is a, a sign that you may have diseases and everything. The problem is God is speaking to the church in these last and even days that we have neglected and we have went through the motion long enough. God is sick and tired of the church people going through the motion. So he sends a drought to you. Can't come to church, can't, can't do nothing. We, we wear masks and, and do wear your mask. I'm not against it. Let me tell you, I wear my mask. But the thing is, we got ourselves in this. Why not obey the rules? You know that we haven't been doing what we're supposed to be doing. He sent a drought in the land. He sent diseases in the land because we will not do what he has called many of us to do. Here it is, the moment. There's a moment in our lives where we feel dry. 
spiritually. Some, somebody in here, I don't know who I'm talking to, but right now in your spirit, you feel dry. Somebody I'm talking to that's watching me by the air, watching me by technology, you feel a drop in your spirit. And it's been lasting a long time. It lasted three and a half years. No water. When there's no water, your garden can't grow. When there's no water, see, ain't nothing like God's water. My mom always said, if you start out using pump water on your greens, on your peas, it don't work. Ain't nothing like a shower but rain from the Lord. See, you can try to fake this thing, but you can't measure up to God's rain. See, when God send the rain, I said, when God send the rain, yes, yes, flowers begin to bloom. When God send the rain, yes, grass begin to grow. When God send the rain, I mean, you know, uh, that thou sometimes it comes so hard, it break off the limbs, <laughs> the wind come with it. And it prunes the trees. And you wonder why. That, oh, it's a storm coming through. Sometimes there be too many trees. You have to cut some down so they can grow properly. Ain't God all right? When a storm come through in the church, sometimes God's pruned the church in order for the church to grow properly because he's getting ready to send the rain. See, long as you got certain things, the rain can't come. When folks are got holding back spirits, how can the worship sing, sing and usher God's presence in when you got somebody that's holding back? How many know when you come to God's house, you ought to be free. You, don't, you shouldn't have no complaints. When you walk through those doors, you ought to be able to say, whatever God got, I need it. Uh, whatever you release in the day, Lord, don't. If you're moving in this season, don't move without me because there is a drought. I, I, I'm preaching because there is a drought and there is a season of restoration. And let me tell you, God is saying, get ready for rain. If you can't get ready, then he can't rain on your pew. God's going to rain down through Pleasant Grove in the next three to four months. Y'all better hear me. Whoever you know, you need to get them into this building. Because God has been working with me and God told me to tell you. He told me plainly to tell you. Get ready. For the abundance of rain. The rain is coming. But there's a moment here that's holding many of us back because of the moment. The moment that we are experiencing right now. We never thought we'd be going through what we're going through with. It's a moment. And in this moment, I don't care what your past victories was. Elijah had just won a great victory. Elijah had just met Ahab, told Ahab, if God be God, then we're going to prove it. If Baal be God, we're going to prove it. Let me tell you, you can't live on what you did yesterday. Let me tell you, I can't live on what mama did. Some folks think they saved because their mama was saved. Baby, I got a new God for myself. We have to live, we live in a time that we got to understand that God is moving in a special way. God is getting ready to send rain, a rain of new beginnings, a rain that has never rained before. 
and we have to be prepared for it. And he had, they had a great victory. And if once you had a great victory, you can't sit around and lavish in that victory. Am I right? My brother, my protégés and coaches, am I right? Can you celebrate on a district win when you haven't played the district championship? One win don't get you to the Coliseum. One win don't win your state championship. You can't celebrate on that. Every time you have a victory, there is some other to win. I, I, I need to tell you, y'all don't know that song, do you? That there is some other victory that you got to win once you have a victory. That means that I have to prepare myself for the next opponent. Because the devil will attack you even in your weakest spots. He will attack you even in your strongest spots. Y'all y'all not hearing me. I said the devil will attack you in your weakest spot, and then he will attack you in your strongest spots. If you don't believe it, you ask Abraham. Abraham is the father of faith. But what did he attack? He attacked his faith. Oh, yes. He attacked you at your strongest point. Somebody think he's coming at that old weak area when you was in the world. He don't, that ain't nothing. You got over that. When God saved you, you got over that. He's going to attack you in what you are in the Christian journey. If you say you're a man, so you better not be talking faith if you're not ready to live it. You can't keep talking about something that devil coming at you is what you think you tough at. He don't bother you about little things you used to do when you begin to sing in the choir. That's where he attack your faith. Folks start walking away. I don't like her. I don't like him. I ain't saying. Come on, somebody. He attack you at your strong points. At your Job 8 and 7. But, 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 but he says, Job says, I, I, I know one thing. He attacked me, but I, I, I'm going to be better in the end. Ain't God all right? Yes, yes, yes. The moment, it was scary to It was scary to They didn't have much in that moment. It's a moment right now of scary to People have lost their jobs. People are hurting. People have lost family members. It's a drought. Churches lose its church members. It's a drought. Yes, it is. It's a drought. Yes, yes. Sometimes our relationship with God can seem just a little bit dry. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Your relationship with God, you, you sit there and you, it seems a little bit dry. Oh, yes. But one thing that Elijah did, that everyone in here got to do. You got to pray. And you got to get a secret place. And when you get that secret place, you got to pray the promises of God. Pray what's God's will. Don't pray outside of his will. But say, Pastor Hare, how, how do I know? That lets you know you have to know the word of God. The word of God is his will. Yes, first king, he, he, you know the reason why Elijah was able to get to his secret place and, and get alone by himself and he could pray the will of God because he knew the will of God because God had told him in first king 18 and 1, God told him. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go show thyself unto him. I will send rain upon the earth. Let, let me tell you. See, if you know the word of God, see, this has happened before this happened. It's a drought now, but he had heard this before. Now I know what I'm praying about. That's why I'm trying to help somebody today. You got to know what you're praying you have to pray specifically what you want. Don't be praying outside of the will of God. People that I'm doing it. Is it outside of the will of God? You said, God didn't answer me. Are you praying the will of God? God answers his will. Pray specifically what you want. 
tell God. You can hold him to it. He said, command ye me. In other words, you know his word, and now you can command him to do things. I remember Moses said, God, you promised to bring us. God, you, you called God to his word. I remember, I remember Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, and he said, Lord, you said if I walk upright before you, and here the man of God coming and tell me to set my house in order, I'm going to die. No, 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 no. I, I've been given, and you... I've been helping people. I've been working. I'm going to pray the will of God. And he said, hey, come back here, Isaiah. Come back to Hezekiah. Because he prayed the will of God. I'm giving him 15 more years. He, he's not going to die. I'm giving him 15 more years on his life. He's not going to die. See, if you pray the will of God in your life, it will come to pass. I want to tell every person in this building, you pray the will of God you shall never lack. You shall never be in want. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. The basket, you're going to, he's, he's going to be the basket in the store. He's going to bless your going out. He's going to bless your coming in. He, he's, he, he's going to give you the desires of your heart when you pray the will of God. But you've got to learn how to get in a secret place. See, when you get, when you're praying the will of God, my sisters and brothers, you're going to have confidence in God. When you pray, you're going to have confidence because you know that you do his will. You know you're living by the word of God, and then when you pray, then you can have confidence because 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says these words. It says, and this is the confidence... I need, I need about five folks to shout that know the word. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if, that if, I, I know somebody ain't going to ask, but it says, if you ask anything according, y'all better say, what I say, pray the will. If I ask anything according to what? If I ask anything according to his will, he going to hear me. I ain't going to be praying outside of his will. I need to pray in his will. And I got some comfort there if I'm praying in his will, Brother Redfield, that he's going to give me what I ask for. I feel like preaching in here. Can I get two people said shit? Say preach, preach. Not only that, Ezekiel 36 and 24, he says these words. He said, For I will take you from among the heathen, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Oh, then will I sprinkle clean. <laughs> water up on you. Somebody ought to, somebody say he gonna take me from amongst, from amongst these devils. See, you gotta get from amongst folks that don't think like you think. You gotta get from amongst folks that don't believe like you believe. He said he gonna sprinkle you with. I'm the only one feeling this thing. I'll tell you right now. I'm gonna receive from all your filters and from all your islands. I will cleanse you. Ain't God all right? Then he said, you're praying according to the will of God. When you pray to the will of God, that's what I do for you. I get you from your enemies. You think you got some enemies? He'll bring you out of them. He'll make them your footstool. You just, they've been talking about your line on you. You just start walking on them. Because he's going to sprinkle you with some clean water. I, somebody say, I, I, it's on the way. It's on the way. Why don't you touch somebody and tell them it's on the way? Yes. Secret place. Somebody say, get in the secret place. Place where Psalm said, 46 and 10, 
David pins these words and he says, Psalm 46 and 10, he says that that secret place is where you need to be, where things begin to happen for you. He'll hide you in that secret place. He will take you, when you learn how to pray his will, you can be still. See, when I know his will, I don't have to be running and wondering. I can just sit because I pray. I ain't got to be thinking about what nobody said yet because I said, I pray his will. I'm going to be still and then I'm going to know. I'm going to know. See, you need to know he's God. See, sometimes we come to church, we in church, but we really don't know that he's God of all of our situation. If you did, you wouldn't be on that telephone as soon as the first problem come. As soon as the first problem come, I've learned. I got had before by the devil now. A young Christian, as soon as the first problem came, my brother, I jumped on the telephone. He came back to bite me. Let me tell you, when the first problem come, I went down on my knees and went to my ship. What do you do? You done all you can do. What do you say when you said all you can say? I go to my secret place and worship there. That's what you have to do. You go to the secret place. You can. What do you do when you can't? What do you say when you can't say nothing? You got to go to that secret place and worship. Thank God all right. Somebody shout revival. It ain't on five weeks. It's every Sunday at Pleasant Grove. Tell somebody there. When you leave here today, it says revival is going on at Pleasant Grove. Out of this pandemic, we got to be revived. And say, so if you want revival, come to Pleasant Grove. At 1130 every Sunday, I, we are being revived. Revive don't mean five nights of service. Revive means when you have restoration that takes place in your life. Revive what's dead. Anything that's been dead around you, bring it back to life. If you can't bring it back to life, go and bury it. Yes. Secondly, we talk about the moment. Now we talk about the miracle. There was a miracle. There's a miracle here. And I'm looking at it. It's a miracle in, in verse 40. Uh, in verse 40, 44 and 45 is a miracle. But this miracle required patience. And it came to pass at the seventh time. Y'all hear me? They've been praying. Somebody in here been praying. Seven, the first time could have been months. Are y'all listening to me? The first time could have been months. Then he said, he went again the second time. And he said it continued to go over and over. But how many know how, how long it was? This pandemic been lasting for over a year right now. And many of you have been praying. I've been praying. Some of your situations have lasted for a long time. But it takes patience. Elijah is praying. He's praying the will of God. He knows the will of God. We talked about it. He knows that God said he's going to send rain, but there's a drought. There are people dying. People don't have nothing. And he's still praying, but he's sending his servants to look rain. But that's the good thing. When you're praying, expect 
what you're praying for. Don't sit there and go, I don't know why you need it. No. Expect something to happen. Because this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will, he's going to give it to us. See, when you, when you pray according to his will, you got to have the confidence. If you shall speak, pray and say to this mountain, be thou removed and have no doubt in your heart, you're going to have whatsoever you say. Can I help somebody? You got, you're going to have what you say. What you say is going to be your upgoing or your downgoing. What you believe, every person I know came to Jesus and Jesus, they touched Jesus and everything, and, and he told them, thy faith has made thee whole. See, just faith can get you a blessing. You know, just, just, just him coming by and I'm preaching and I'm preaching and all of a sudden you get blessed. But in order to get you whole, you got to go after him. Oh, y'all don't hear me. See, <laughs> it's one thing to get blessed out there, but when you pursue him, he makes you whole. See, everybody that pursued him, like the woman that touched his, she said, if I could just get to the hem of his garment, she was pursuing him. And he turns around and said, thy faith has made you See, just sitting in here can get you a blessing, but you need to be whole. See, that blessing might last for a little while, but I need to be whole. I need to be a blessed person when I'm going out and coming in. I need to be blessed everywhere. I need a blessing for a lifetime, not just to heal me today. I need to stay well in my spirit, in my mind, in my soul, in my family, in everything that I do on my job, I need to be made. And you only get made whole when you pursue him. See, if you sit at home every Sunday, don't come to church, you come every now and then. You're not pursuing him. Um, if you're pursuing something, you're running after it. You're chasing it. God, what, what, where we go next? What, what you got going on now? What they got going on at the church? What, what are you doing next, God? But you just sit around and you at home and, and nonchalant and all of a sudden, God, you know this happening. I need you to... Okay. He love you. He'll keep you a little bit. But then all of a sudden, some more trouble come. I need him to get rid of it. I need to be made whole. Here it is. It says... The miracle. The miracle had great potential. Don't you ever sit in your life and despise the little small things that happen. Everything that happens in my life that's good, I don't care how little it is. Somebody gave me something the other day, and I was just, oh, thank you. They said, oh, that ain't much of nothing. Why are you acting like that? No, yes, it is. Because first of all, you gave it to me. That means a lot to me because I'm, I'm looking at who it came from. God had to be in it. You don't even like me. I wish I had somebody to pray with me right now. Listen to me. I, I thank God for every little thing. If I be asking him for a place to stay, and I, I, I asked God, I said, God, give me, give me a place to stay. He gave me a little old trailer. My wife and I was in Homer, Louisiana. He gave me a little old trailer. <laughs> I went out and got the best furniture I could get. We, we couldn't hardly move in there with the furniture. We were sliding between the father. She know I'm telling the truth. In a little bed, in a little bedroom back there, there's one bathroom in there, and there's one bed up there. But in that little bedroom back there, we, we sleep. You couldn't even put a, a queen bed in there. You had to put a, a little bed in that person sleep by themselves. And we right by each other. Boy, we thought that thing was so good. That thing was nice, though. It was red and white. One of those square trailers. There were no fancy trailers, didn't 
That thing was square. And my wife never complained. I grew up, I didn't have nothing. She, she, she never knew about not having nothing. <laughs> Come on. But she stuck right by my side. She just went in there, stayed in that little trailer. I got cut from the Houston Rockets. I down there trying to go offshore and all that. It, it, it wasn't even me. I'm out there trying to do oil wells. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm out there trying to do all this stuff. It, it, you know, sometimes you'll be doing stuff. It ain't even you. But this is a small beginning. We didn't despise it. And I mean, I come home. She'd tell me to take my shoes off. At the door, I said, it's right the trailer. I, take my shoes off. What you mean? Stuff taught me something. Thank God, all right. Treated that thing like it was a mansion. Whatever you got, you treat it like it's a mansion. Don't you ever despise anything God done. If you got it, God bless you with it. Any, anything you got, I don't care if you're living with somebody. Tell Lord, thank you. Thank God, all right. Yes. Don't despise the small beginnings because the little things will look at it like it ain't nothing. He told that guy, he said to his servant, go look again. This the miracle. But he said, I don't see nothing, but I see. He went back there seven times. He came back, he said, I see something about the size of a man's hand. And you talking about rain? I see a little bit of cloud up there in the sky. And if you all, and you know you're walking in the car, or you out there working, you see a little cloud like that, you're like, hey, sun shining, ain't no rain coming. They say it's going to rain. They say, they say it's going to be raining in the forecast. I don't see a cloud in the sky. I see one little cloud about that big. <sighs> ain't God all right? He says, tell Ahab. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Get ready. That leads me. I'm going to let you go home. It's about 1240. I'm going to let you go home. L let me tell you. He, he tells, get ready. Get thee down, Ahab, and go. Somebody shout, go. When your miracle comes, it doesn't mean for you to sit at home. When the rain comes, doesn't mean for you to sit around idle. It's time to go. I want to tell everybody in here that say you've been born again. I want to ask you something. This is not going to make you shout. What you been doing since you've been saved? in the kingdom of God. How many people have you witnessed to and brought them to Christ since the rain, you say, came in your life? When the rain comes, it's time to get up and go. When the rain comes, it's time to do what Jesus told his disciples. Matthew 28 and 19. He says these words. It's time to go. Go ye. Therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And that makes me wonder why people sit around and they talk about you ain't baptized right. That makes me wonder. What does it mean to be baptized? Well, I'm going to do it like Jesus said do it. His writing is in red. That means it's important. 
You got some folk walking around saying, well, uh, you need to be just baptized in the name of Jesus. Don't let nobody fool you. And I don't care which way you do it, because if you use the name Jesus, he covers all things. I'm not trying to be a little denomination over <laughs> baptism. Some folk try to be a little denomination over baptism. But uh, he said, go ye therefore. I don't know about you, when the rain came in my life, I had to go and tell somebody. First person I told was my mama. Came back to Mississippi and said, mama, something happened Thursday night. Something that I, I used to see your hands go up. I used to see your feet get light. I used to see the ushers fanning you. And it used to make me mad. And, and I was saying, Mama, I thought the preacher was getting good. And, and I know any time a preacher preach real good, if my mama was here today, she'd be shouting right now. Well, uh, maybe we don't have everything she had to go. Something about it, about uh, when you talk about the Holy Ghost, I could see it coming. Even my, my, my kids went to church with my mom when she was all oh, living. Jeremy said, uh, Jari, you sitting there acting like you're crazy. Don't you see Big Mama shaking? Because when she starts shaking her hand, Let's go back and hit somebody. And Jeremy said, I could see her. I could see it coming on. And I just moved out of the way. But Jared, Jared is so sincere and looking at the preacher. He sit there and get his head knocked off. Ain't God all right? But uh, this thing called the Holy Ghost, when the rain comes, you try to stop pulling your hand down and your feet get loose. Ain't God all right? Well, when you stop your feet, oh, Lord, your mouth will fly open. Because this rain that I'm talking about is the rain of the power of God. Somebody in here need the rain in your life. And when it rain, he'll make you go. Somebody say it'll make you go. It'll make you run. It ain't nobody behind you. Somebody shout. It's on the way. Your blessing is on the way. Oh, Lord. Somebody need to get ready. Go in your closet. You've been wanting a new wardrobe. Take the old stuff out. Start cleaning out your closet. Ain't God all right? It's on the way. Ain't God all right? Yeah, Lord. Somebody need to start buying your furniture. You've been wanting a new house. It's on the way. Somebody say it's on the way. Yes, it is. Oh! I feel like preaching Somebody You've been Dealing with some health issues Yeah Start waving your hand Because I come to tell you Your healing Is on the way Yeah Lord Yeah Take out that old furniture, bring in your new furniture. And when you get in your new place, don't take none of that old mess with you. Somebody, you're in a bad relationship. Uh, tell that relationship goodbye. The only way to get a good one, you gotta tell the old one. Uh, I don't need you calling my phone. Uh, lose my number. Ain't God all right? Lose my number. Cause I got rain 
coming my way. In verse 46, he told Ahab that he had the Lord was on Elijah. He girded up his lungs, told Ahab, get thee down, go. Ain't God all right? I want to tell somebody right now, it's time to go. Point at somebody, tell them it's time to go. It's time to go. Do what the Lord say do. It's time to go from being in the same old position. It's time to go. The rain is coming. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. God getting ready. I say God getting ready. He getting ready to bless somebody right now. Right there on your pew. He's getting ready to rain. He's going to rain right in your home. He's going to rain right on your job. He's going to rain in your life. Right here in Pleasant Grove. The rain is coming, and when the rain comes, you gotta go tell somebody. My Bible tells me in Psalm 126 and 6, it says, The word he that goeth forth and weepeth, barren precious seed, shall double, double come again. If you go tell somebody about the Lord, he going to double you. <laughs> somebody said when you come back, when you sow a seed, when you sow a seed, God's going to double your seed. Somebody say, yeah, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready for the rain. Rain is coming, and when the rain comes, you gotta go, go tell them, as he said in Acts 5, Acts 5 and 20, he said, go, look what he said, go, stand, speak in the temple, when you get saved, when you get a blessing, you're talking about you can't talk, but when the Holy Ghost come, It'll make you stand in the temple, tell dying men and women all God's words. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Does anybody know he's all right? Say, yeah! He said, go in Mark chapter 1 and verse 38. And he said unto them, let us go. Y'all yeah, better help me say go. Go. Somebody say go. He said let us go into the next town. Uh, you can't just sit here in this church and not tell nobody that God is alive. You got to tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. Why don't you wave your hand? Say it's time to go. Tell somebody it's time to go. It's time to speak. It's time to tell somebody that God is a way out of no way. God is a burden bearer. God is a heavy load carer. Somebody shout, yeah! Ain't God all right? In Mark chapter 5 and verse 19, the Bible says, in this verse, he says the word. Whoa! I'm gonna send you out. He wrote unto us if a man brother die and leave his wife behind him and leave his children, take his wife. Ain't God alright? You gotta go. Somebody said go in Matthew. 13 and 3 he said these words he spoke to a parable it was a parable that he spoke in 
Somebody say, I got a miracle. I got a miracle. I got a miracle. I got a miracle waiting on me. I got a miracle. The rain. Somebody shall rain. It's coming on down. Ah, the rain. I feel like preaching. The rain of the power of the Holy Ghost is going to come in pleasant growth because we in a revival. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we are in the midst of a revival. We're going to be revived because some rain going to come in our life because it's due season. I've been praying about this rain I've been praying that somebody get filled today is your day to get filled with the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost power I'm talking about make you talk right make you live right make you live holy make you talk right tell that devil ain't no devil in hell can stop me from being who I am because the rain has put running in my feet the rain has put clapping in my hand the rain somebody say rain 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 on me lift your hands up say rain rain on me rain on me rain on me we need your rain the power of God I could see Ahab getting down off that chariot I don't care how bad he was but when the man of God said move he began to move that's a good thing when the man of God said move you ought to move somebody in here right now need to jump up and down tell that devil I got some rain falling on me right now why don't you spin all the way around say I got that rain lift those hands lift those hands Lift those hands. Tell God. Tell God. Ah, thank you for the rain. Come on and tell the God thank you. Lift those hands to heaven. Thank God all right. Somebody tell him thank you right now. Oh yes, oh yes. The rain is coming. You got to be prepared for when it comes. The rain is, God is raining in this place right now. Yes, yes, yes. There are the woman in the service. Speaking in other tongues, all the while she was praying, let your will be done. While she was praying, the Spirit. Soul. 
I said, I know, I know that feeling. It's in the old, old flow. Overflow. Oh, overflow. I know that feeling in the overflow. Overflow. Lift your hand to heaven. Oh, overflow. Ah, I know that feeling. In the old overflow And when the spirit comes You let him have his way You'll feel better tomorrow Than you feel Broken. That's just how it goes. Cause I know that feeling in the old overflow. He, he, he's raining right now. Overflow. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you right now. Somebody said, the rain, the rain, the rain. When the rain came in the book of Acts, when the power of God fell, they went into all the nation and began to preach and to teach. We need the rain. Lift those hands to heaven right now. hands and I said Lord I received the rain come on yes 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 come on receive it today receive the rain today let him rain on you don't you leave here the same let the power of God come upon you as never before because we've been in a moment but God got a miracle for you then would he give you the miracle? Don't you ever be the same. Start going, start doing, start being who God wants you to be. The miracle and then the motion. You got to get in motion. Somebody said get in motion, get in motion. Whatever it is, you got a gift, you need to start operating. Don't be scared. Don't be scared in the midst of this pandemic. You have a gift. Start operating in your gift. There was, a, there was a boy who played football. His name was Thompson. That night, they was running the football. They kept running the football and they get, kept getting tackled. They kept giving it to this one young man. And somebody in the bleachers said, give the ball to Thompson. They give it to somebody else. They get tackled again. They'll say it over and over, give it to Thompson. Get
get tackled again. Finally, it kept happening over and over. Some long, tall guy got up out of the huddle of them being tackled. He said, Thompson don't want it. There's a lot of Christian folks don't want it. God wants you to be a blessing to his kingdom. But do you want it? You don't want it. Can I give the ball to you? You don't want it. Are you, do, are you willing to be a witness? Are you willing to stand up and be a leader? Are you willing to witness on your job? Are you willing to witness the people in the street? Thompson don't want it. There's a lot of Christian folks that don't want it. They're, they're happy. They're just going to church. But do you really want it? Because I hear people all the time say, I don't see how you do what you do. Because I want it. See, when you want it and you got a passion for it, it doesn't bother you. You can do it. I can do all things through Christ. Because see, some of you all depending on resources. You're depending upon what the minimum wage is. You're depending upon what Sanderson Farm going to pay you. You're depending upon what, what the box factory going to pay you. Let me tell you, that's resources. But he's the source of my strength. See, I depend on the source of my strength. Ain't God all right. Somebody say, my source. My source. Lift those hands to heaven right now and tell him thank you. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, prepare us. God, convict our hearts that we cultivate our own hearts to get ready for the abundance of rain and the blessings that you're going to send our way. Don't let us be idle. Don't let us be lethargic and apathetic about this Christian journey. Oh God, I pray today that you send some stickers just to stick us, to push us to our greatest capacity. Oh God, we thank you right now that every soul here is blessed. God, give them strength, give them courage to be who you're calling for in this last and evil day. In the name of Jesus, don't let nobody leave here the same as they came because they're is a moment that we're going through where people don't love no more. They seem to shoot you as to speak to you. There's a moment. But we know there's a miracle in you. And when that miracle comes, help us, God, to guide our minds that when we get in motion and go, do what you're calling us to do. In Jesus' name, amen.